FabLab Maastricht started uh, four years ago and uh, we developed like a normal FabLab uh, with uh, not enough money so we started uh, with uh, not much equipment. Finally we received uh, European funding also from the local government and from national government and uh, now we are a professional fab lab doing uh, research in affordable 3D printing. As you can see uh, we have a lot of 3D printers and develop our own 3D printers. This is one of the bike flows and um, we try to uh, support the community in ways awareness about uh, digital fabrication train the people how to use the machines and the software and uh, support uh, companies in uh, doing innovation. Well, as you see here, this is a large printer for ceramics but also for 3D printing food. <coughs> now we are testing uh, chocolate, as you can see here the quality of uh, printing real chocolate is uh, quite good. You can also print large objects in that. This is only uh, one uh, sort of research for a large company in making glass. We are testing uh, glass clay to make uh, the prototypes for the glass industry. Same with the ceramic industry. Our city became uh, big because of the large uh, ceramic industry. And here you can see a cup printed by the by flow, which is a very nice uh, quality. Metal printing, it's uh, very expensive at the moment, 150,000 euros is such a printer. And we try to make uh, beautiful uh, objects of real ones with an uh, affordable 3D printer. This is also an invention of us, this is BioWeber, it's not a flexible PLA, but it's much stronger. And this is an invention of DSM, a large chemical company here in the Maastricht uh, surrounding. And it's uh, very strong, very flexible, and you don't need to, uh, to buy real rubber. You can make it from rapeseed, small yellow flowers. So this is possible in all areas uh, all over the world to make these plants. And here you see a very nice uh, project. This is a prosthetics uh, from a child, uh, an ear, as you can see. Here you can see uh, how it was put on the head. And what they do now is uh, they 3D scan the good ear, they turn it around on the computer, then they print it in wax as a mold, and then they put in silicone rubber, and they have to color it. And this project uh, takes so much time that it costs 5,000 euros to make such an ear. And we are trying to uh, do it directly, as you can see here. If you compare it with uh, the only printer which can print silicon in the world, it's a printer from uh, Envision Tech, 150,000 euro. This one is uh, printed perfectly. We use the medical uh, silicon which we need to do. So if this project is uh, ready, then everybody in the world can print silicon prosthetics, which is uh, very nice. To see. And uh, you can do that with uh, funding from the government, uh, just like uh, other uh, innovations, organizations like university do. And I think uh, every fab lab should have uh, some money to do that. Universities, they have special departments focusing on one topic. And one of the main uh, opportunities of fab labs is that you can combine ideas and then uh, you can speed up the innovation and also in an affordable way. Well, the 3D by Flow is a foldable uh, 3D printer. It was uh, foldable because uh, as a fab lab we go a lot of times to uh, fairs and to schools and now it's easy to take your way your uh, 3D printer. And schools say that it's also nice that they can uh, store it in a safe way. It's easy to use, you can use a SD card, you can use a wireless uh, internet and you can use a USB cable to directly connect the 3D printer. Um, the design is completely different as uh, other, other printers. Uh, that means that you don't need to calibrate it anymore, which is one of the biggest problems of 3D printers. And uh, 
Many people told us, why should I buy a 3D printer? Because I can only print plastics. Now it's easy to exchange the extruder. This is the paste extruder. But you can also use a filament extruder and a granulate extruder. So you can print a lot of materials, ceramics, bioplastic, bio rubber, uh, silicon uh, and even food. As a Fab Lab, we are social entrepreneurs. We always want to share the knowledge. And where it's possible, we, we still do. But um, when you start a company uh, like the Byflow, which is not from the Fab Lab, it will be a separated company. Then you need to uh, keep the secrets uh, at the first stage. And when you uh, have been started and you raise enough money, then you can share the knowledge. So the idea is to share the knowledge of the older versions of the 3D printers and always sell the newest printer in a closed version. So that, that is our uh, thinking about that. Well, you can compare it with, for example, the tech shops in the US. Tech shops are in a commercial way, they are much larger than uh, Fab Labs. I think the Fab Lab is an educational and uh, <coughs> Sorry, educational uh, and training uh, institute and just like polytechnics and universities you, you should uh, receive uh, government money for that. Um, but of course you can uh, raise also extra money from uh, renting the equipment and the rooms and giving training. But it's not much money so it will not be enough to, to uh, keep the Fab Lab alive especially if you want to do it in a professional way. Well, what I see is that more and more schools are starting now Fab Labs. Even in our city, we supported two schools to buy all the equipment to train the teachers, especially to train the students, because the students are training the uh, teachers, of course. And um, it's very nice to see that even young children from 12 years old are developing so fast that they can even support us after a while. In my vision, uh, the Fab Lab could be a, a small organization for local innovation. So we still need them because the developments are going faster and faster. So somebody should keep up with all the developments. And they should be the, uh, specialized in telling stories. Telling about the opportunities of the new techniques. For example, 4D printing. Uh, fourth dimension is time and MIT in Boston is already has a lab in 4D printing. Well, nobody here in the area doesn't know about it. So we have to tell them about the new opportunities. Uh, so I think Fab Labs will still exist, but in another way. So we don't train the children because they are trained at school, but we need uh, more and more to support companies and people to keep up with all the technical developments. <laughs>